So let's build a grooving plane. And as with most projects, I like to start with a piece of firewood. This is a particularly crunky piece of firewood. Uh, and it's not a very straight grain piece either. So I have to flatten one side and it takes a bit more. I'm using a cambered plane here to take off large chunks and just bring it to a, a flat side. Sometimes going across the grain just to hit those high points quickly. Once I get one side perfectly smooth and straight, then I can create another side that is 90 degrees to this first side. And uh, it's not as difficult as it looks. This is really only about 10 minutes either way. Using a straight edge, you can easily find where the high spots are and where you need to clean it down a little bit more. And very quickly bring it into a uh, perfectly flat, smooth piece of white oak. Now that I have one side at 90 degrees, I can work on the second side. And it's really the same thing over again. You're just making sure that uh, you are bringing things closer and closer to 90 degrees the whole length along it. And there you go. Once I have two straight sides, I can start to mark out where I can cut this at. Uh, the first cut I'm going to make is to bring these to length so that I will have two grooving plane bodies out of this. I'm going to be making a tongue and groove set, so I want them to come from the same piece of wood, running in the same direction, and make them as close as possible together. So that gives me a little bit longer than I want for the length of the plane bodies, and that allows me to work with a little bit of flexibility. Now let's cut out the first plane body. This one will be one inch and a quarter thick, and the next one will be an inch and a half thick. The inch and a half will be for the tongue body, and the inch and a quarter thick will be for the grooving body. Now that I have a block, I can just make sure that everything is 90 degrees on all the sides. Next step, I need to have an iron. Uh, the iron will actually give me the measurements for everything else that I need to go on. And that's just a simple piece of O1 tool steel that I ordered, one quarter inch by quarter inch. Using a file, I can put a 30 degree angle on one end and then sharpen it just like anything else. Now the steel comes annealed and I need to harden it. So with a torch, I bring it up to red hot. And as soon as I see a solid red all the way across the tip, I plunge it into motor oil and that will cool it. O1 is oil cooled whereas A2 is water cooled and I much prefer O1. Then I put it in a toaster oven at 400 degrees uh, for about four hours and slowly bring the temperature down from 400 degrees and that uh, makes it a little bit softer so you can still work with it, it's no longer brittle. Now let's work on the plain body again. The first thing I need to do is create a fence and that fence will be one half inch away from the outside. So I will have a quarter inch groove that is set one quarter inch away from the fence. And the fence is also cut down one half inch. So basically I'm making a rabbit one half inch by one half inch. The 45 makes uh, very quick work of that. Now I set my marking gauge to the exact th thickness of the iron. And that allows me to put a mark down there so that I know precisely where the groove needs to go in this plane. And I'm always checking against the iron because it needs to be exact. Now, yes, I know I'm making a grooving plane, the 45, to make a grooving plane. And on my first one, I just used a chisel to make this groove. It's really not that difficult of a task, but if you have a 45, might as well use it. So I'm also checking it against the tonguing plane because this needs to be a matched pair. The tongue and groove need to fit together perfectly. And when I mean perfectly, I mean thousands of an inch carefully. So there's the profile of the grooving plane. Next, we need to make a wedge. And I'm making this out of some ash that I have. The angle of the edge is one inch to four inches. So I make a mark four inches out, one inch away from the side and strike my line. This is a fairly difficult cut to make straight, but it is um, easy to do once you understand what you're doing and 
have a solid grasp on the uh, on the board. Then I can take away those cutting marks with a plane and I usually go a little overzealous because this is really enjoyable. Now I make marks on the plane body and the bed of the iron will be at 45 degrees and then I'll set the iron straight against that so I can make a mark precisely where the iron will be at so I know exactly either side of the iron. Then I can set the wedge on there to add its angle to the 45 degrees and the iron and know exactly where I want that, uh, that mark to be. Now to cut out this area that I have now marked out, I just use the chisel to create the knife wall and cut either side. I make the cuts at 90 degrees straight down, uh, precisely down to the depth of the thickness of the iron. Um, I'll actually cut it a little bit shy of that and then chisel down exactly to the thickness. Removing the waste is really enjoyable. I like just taking out chunks of wood. Just make sure you don't go too deep or, do or go into either of the, uh, the two walls. Once it's down most of the way, I can use the chisel to pare out and smooth the body, just taking off the high points and the easily removed chunks. After paring down, I can then get the router and clean the, the bottom perfectly. I'm regularly checking the depth against the iron to make sure that it's a nice and smooth fit and adjusting as needed. I'm taking very smooth, small steps down so that I don't overshoot it and put the iron down too low. I love this part, but I say that a lot about the hand tools. Next, the side wall that the wedge will sit against, I pare it down just a little bit more and I'll put an angle, angling back towards the body. This will allow the wedge to seat up against that angle and be drawn in towards the body. I'll put that same angle on the wedge so that there's a nice tight fit. Once everything feels good and fits in well, then I can do the shaping on the wedge. So that the, the wedge is the proper angle. I need to cut the tip so that it doesn't extend out past the groove and also clean out the nose of it so that the chips from the iron have a place to go. So to clean that out, I just start back about three quarter inches from the tip and shave off all the way down to zero at the very tip. It's a slow process, but uh, take your time with it. Once the chisel gets it really close to where it is, I can just put it on the rasp or file to give it a smooth edge. I don't want the chips to have anything to grab on. Then with that put in place, I can do a quick test. It is now a functional grooving plane, but we want to make it pretty. So I use a coping saw and a file and chisels to shape the top of the wedge uh, to give it that standard wedge head look. Chisel makes quick work of rounding the corners and then I can come in with a file just to smooth it out and make it look pretty. And you can start to see the traditional shape of a wedge. Now onto the body. I am using a very aggressive rasp to take down all the corners and then I'm feeling it with my hand. And I'm not going for any particular look other than a grip that is very comfortable to me. After going at it with the aggressive rasp, I bring in a, an aggressive file, and then a finer file, and a finer file, until I get a butter smooth surface all the way around. I'm constantly feeling it to make sure it fits good in the hand, but just cleaning it up with progressively smoother files gives you that nice finish. I put a little bit of olive oil on the body. This allows the fibers to stand up but more importantly, it allows me to see any file marks that may have been left uh, so I can clean those up ahead of time. And I'll find little things that I just want to clean up. The olive oil is not a problem when filing. It allows me to clean it up nicely. 
after everything is the way I want it, give it a coat of boiled linseed oil, and uh, that's about it. It is pure boiled linseed oil. It doesn't have the solvents. It makes it really nice. Put my maker's mark on it, and then I can put it all together and test the plane. She runs like butter. Takes a little bit of uh, tweaking to get to know the plane, but uh, oh, that's just nice. Next up, a tongue plane. But I get to enjoy this for a little bit. So there's the first half of my tongue and groove plane set. Uh, I'm making these for a friend and uh, I'm really enjoying this and I think I'm going to have to make a set for myself when I'm done. Um, but this is a grooving plane, so basically it puts a quarter inch wide groove, a quarter inch deep, and a quarter inch from the side. So you basically have a quarter inch groove running right down the middle of a three quarter inch board. And then next up I'm going to be making a grooving plane, or excuse me, a tonguing plane. It's Basically the exact same thing except for rather than, cutting, rather than cutting a groove, it cuts a tongue. So that is the small piece that is then designed to fit into this groove. Uh, so this will put uh, two grooves side by side, a quarter inch thick, a quarter inch deep with a quarter inch in between them. And that will then perfectly fit into the groove that is made. So you can make tongue groove um, flooring boards as well as box joints and other things like that that you can come together with that. Now I've made another grooving plane in the past. Um, you may have seen that video. I'll put a link to that um, up here somewhere. <laughs> but uh, this is a very this is a very basic grooving plane. Uh, this makes a groove that is slightly thinner than quarter inch, um, a quarter inch deep, and about a quarter inch away from the edge. Um, and the reason why it's kind of sloppy is I made this one out of a chisel. And um, the old chisel I have wasn't really great chisel, so that made it a fantastic iron for a plane. Uh, this one I specially ordered 01 tool steel to make the, uh, the irons for both the tongue and groove. So uh, that's a little bit of the difference to it, but basically it's the exact same thing, just a little bit more focused and a little bit uh, sharper edge and uh, uh, it's just lined up better to do what it needs to do. So hopefully a week from today I will have out the tonguing plane. Um, if uh, you're coming to this a little later, I'll probably have a link for that over here, <laughs> but not yet. So keep an eye open for that and we will have a tongue and groove set and I'll be shipping this off to my friend and I hope he likes it. So that's about it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this project. Uh, please let me know in the comments below what questions do you have. Uh, what items did I miss? Is there some more information you'd love to have? Uh, please let me know and I will I'll get that for you. Other than that, if you like the video, please hit the like or subscribe button. Feel free to check out one of my other videos. And until next time, have a wonderful day.